Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I am so excited because and I hope you can see the difference in this video than some of the others. Is I've got a new stand, and I'm, you take the first two, and you're going to tie them together. So they're like this, and you're going to do that with the other four. Um, saving time is you don't tie a knot in that second one and you tie it together like this. So let's, I'll show you. Um, I do have a habit of tie, tie, tie. It's one of the shortcuts that you can do to help shorten everything out. So you would tie the knot in this first one. And you take this one, and since you're going to tie it together anyways, you just go ahead and tie it together. Now, it's best to squeeze and stretch each one of these before you start. You want them to be um, soft. Now, this pattern, the reason why it's good to practice this, this uh, weave it comes in handy if you're doing dresses. It comes in handy if you're <clears throat> if you're going to make um, all sorts of uh, things regarding that. So now each one of these, so you're not going to hook them together like this. So we're going to stand up. So you have it like this, and then like this, and like this. So they're like so. I apologize. <laughs> so they're actually like this. Okay. But take the two. So you have four in your hand. This is what I do. This is the end. This is the middle. And you make a bubble. And then you make another bubble. Like that. And you go ahead and put them together so it looks like this. Okay? Then you take this and this and you make your bubble. And then you make a bubble here. And you wrap it around. So now, it looks like this, and then you have your two ends. These are the tricky parts. You have to make a bubble on the end, and you have to make a second bubble. So every time you go to the end, you have to make two bubbles. And then you make one bubble here. Why? Because you already have a bubble here, a bubble here now, and a bubble here, and a bubble here. And then bring it together. Okay, now you got this, and it looks like this. So you skip these two, <clears throat> and you go directly to this, because you want to make the second row. So you've already made the second row with these two, because there's now a second row, and you want to take these two. So skip these two, and go to these two, and you make one bubble. Now remember, only the end pieces get two bubbles. So you make one bubble, and one bubble, and then you go ahead and put together. Like so. And you have it looking like this now. Okay? Then you skip these two and you go and look, you're on the end again. What do you do? You take the end and you do the two bubbles. So one, two. Like so.
So, then you take this one and you make one bubble. Like this. And then you bring it together. Now, when you're using multiple colors and doing this weave, here's what it looks like with all of them. And then you have your pattern. Now, as you can tell, if you rotate the blue over to this side, and this becomes the end bubbles, you then start tracking that blue and it goes across, starts making across. So pattern wise, you can make all sorts of different patterns when you're doing different colors. Well, let's do this again. Now that you have it set up like this, we're gonna do another regular, as the pattern sits here, blue, pink, goldenrod, yellow, turquoise, and gray. Okay. So then what do you do? Well, you made this bubble here and you made these two. Now you're gonna go and you can do And when I start doing this, I'll actually put the weave against my chest like this. And if I'm sitting down, I'll put the weave on this and up on my leg. So I'm working towards my body. But if I'm standing, this will be the better view for you guys. So how do you do the third row? Okay. Now the cool thing about doing the third row is you got these two together. So what you want to do is these two now. So now you're going in between. You take one bubble and one bubble. It looks like this. It's a little weird looking. <clears throat> and then you take these two. <clears throat> one bubble. And one bubble. Now you're on the end again. So you got that. So you do your two bubbles. You got your one. So because now you got row three. Now you're doing row four. And the end bubbles help you do that. One, two, take your next color, make the one bubble, and now you have row four. I know it's a little confusing because you want to do it on this side. I don't. Um, you can, but I don't recommend it. Unless your your brain works differently than mine. <laughs> to what's comfortable. Once you learn the pattern, you will adjust to how you like to do it faster. And then, of course, you do another. Hmm. take the next color, squeeze and stretch a little bit, kind of gets a little bulky, do another bubble. And we're joining these two together. Can you see how you've got row four now right here. Now, Take this one, the end piece, do your two bubbles, one, 
two, and then your one. Bring it together here. Now you have the four bubbles. See how this one's a little bit bigger? If you, you try to make sure every single one of your bubbles are the same size, and you start making a pattern. Now, like I said, the cool thing about this pattern is it can be a it can become a blanket it can become a wave because when you're done with it it becomes bendable and foldable so right now i'm going to go ahead and continue weaving this and we'll we'll show you what it looks like afterwards <laughs> So, two ways you can do it. So it looks like this is you'd break it off in tie knots. Or you can do pinch twists. I prefer breaking off tie knots because usually when I'm doing this, I'm attaching a border around the ends. So I will take good hands with, break it off, and I will go ahead and tie a knot. bubbles, the two bubbles I needed uh, separate or roll because I didn't. So now I have to create, I have to fix that by twisting that bubble. Make sure that you make your bubbles and you twist them so they don't unravel. And when you wrap them together, 
This is another thing that can occur if you do not wrap them together. So what happened is I only went one time around. So then when I broke it off to tie it off, um, that one time around, it wasn't going to hold it. So make sure when you take the two together that you've blowed up and you're making bubbles, make sure you, you wrap it around so the bubbles hold. Don't do it once. Do it twice or three times. Okay, so this is what happens. And then you can lay it a little flat. And it becomes a wall. It can become tie it together and it can become a beautiful type vase and different colors. <clears throat> Things like that. Uh, doing a, another weave for basket weave is better than doing this as a vase. But it does that. And what's even cooler is you can make it as wide as you want and of course you can make it narrow. I recommend if you're just starting off, do the six, do them in different colors so you know where you're at in your pattern. Uh, if you get creative, you can then, here's another way of how you can get creative is <clears throat> when you're done hooking these two together, put the gray on this side, put the gray where that balloon would be up on this side and this one would be on this side and then all of a sudden this would be the teal green going up and gray would come up this way. And every time you make a connection here, you basically can rotate that gray all the way across and it becomes a one line gray going up in a diagonal pattern. It's really cool. There's a lot of advances, advanced ways of doing this. Again, if you have never done this weave, I recommend you doing it with just uh, the six balloons and six different colors. So you know where you're at. You can do it in solid colors if you want. That's great too. You know, uh, please like, share, comment, and suggestions are welcomed as always. Thank you. And thanks for being part of my YouTube channel and thanks for your support. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And as I always say at the end of all of my videos, practice, practice, and practice because that's what's gonna make you guys great. Blue